this is Frode and welcome back to Actualize Notes TV. Today we have another great book, Perennial Seller by Ryan Holiday. Perennial Seller, subtitle, The Art of Making and Marketing Work That Lasts. Ryan Holiday is uh, my favorite modern stoic and just a really captivating, captivating writer. We already featured his work on his books, Ego is the Enemy, the Obstacle is the Way and The Daily Stoic, and I highly encourage you to check those out if uh, you also like the work of Ryan. Now, this book is pretty much for everyone who are selling ideas, and that's uh, pretty much all of us. If we're uh, teaching, we're selling ideas. If we're entrepreneurs, we're selling ideas. If we're writers, we're selling entrepreneurs, etc. So if you're into that, I think you'll dig this book. Now, I uh, got this book two days ago, a few hours after uh, Ryan published it, and uh, I figured out that I wanted to do kind of a sprint. And um, so I read this uh, book yesterday, I uh, devoured it, and uh, then I created a mind map. Woke up this morning, created a six-page PDF where I reflect on how we can apply these ideas to our life, and here we are exploring my favorite five big ideas. Now, let's check out the first one. Purpose. One of the most important things if you want to create work that lasts is to have a purpose. Robert Greene calls it your life's task in his book Mastery. Napoleon Hill, the author of Thinking Grow Rich, calls it your definite major purpose. Seneca, the ancient Stoic, calls it man's unique good. It all amounts to the same. Your purpose, your mission in life. And Ryan says that that purpose can be almost anything, but it has to be there. And Daniel Pink has a great way to think about our purpose. He, in his book, Drawing, he talks about the one sentence. And he talks about the story of uh, when uh, Kennedy, the, uh, the president, was, uh, uh, was being counseled by a woman who, who said to him that a great man is a sentence. And if Kennedy kept trying to do too many things, it, uh, he would be in the danger of um, his uh, life being a muddled paragraph of what he created. And uh, Pink uh, basically asks us, what's your sentence? The uh, sentence of, Lee, of uh, Abraham Lincoln was uh, something like, he preserved the Union and freed the slaves. Elon Musk's sentence might be, he populated Mars and saved humanity. The sentence I'm trying to create is something like he helped people actualize and created the greatest collection of wisdom ever, much inspired by Brian Johnson at Optimize.me. Thanks to the question, what's your sentence? That's crucial if you want to make, make work that lasts. Two, sacrifice. And also, if you want to make work that lasts, you have to make some sacrifices. You just, you just have to. And he, he uses a few examples. Time. What will you spend your time doing, and what will you not spend your time doing? Then we have uh, easy money. Easy money. Are you going to uh, go for the easy deals uh, that will might help you in the short run? Or do you aim at your purpose and know that you might earn more money in the long run through the great work you do? Comfort. Are you going to be comfortable all the time going for the immediate gratification, choosing the path of vice? Or are you going to choose the path of virtue that Hercules chose? of doing the harder thing, going out of your comfort zone, living nobly. And lastly, we have reputation. A recognition. Basically the same. Do you, are you going to chase fame and being popular right now? Or do you trust that as you do your great work over time, you might have a shot at your work lasting for decades hundreds of years, and even millennia, like a lot of work has already done. Not something that will happen if you try to chase fame in the short run. My hunch is, and all these become more clear when you have your purpose. I help people actualize, therefore I read, 
write and teach and create mind maps consistently? What are your basic practices that you'll spend your time doing and what are the sacrifices you'll make that you'll not spend time doing? 3. Competition Ryan says that there is no competition. There, there is only the best that you can do. Many other great teachers says that the only competition is the one against yourself. William B. Irvine, author of the book A Guide to the Good Life, he's also a modern stoic, he says that um, the, m your competitors in a race are simultaneously your teammates in the much more important competition against your other self, because your teammates force you to push your other self, that weaker part of yourself and only wants comfort and doing the easier thing, to push that other self out of its comfort zone and do the harder thing. So, you can either have no competition, competition against yourself, and you can use your competitors as allies to compete your other self. It's worth a thought. Four, envy. <laughs> this one is great. Have you ever uh, seen a friend or somebody you know get a, score a big break or a big opportunity and you thought to yourself or even said to them, how did you get that? And uh, yeah, that's envy right there. And uh, Ryan says that the emphasis on you and that are significant. You, because that means like, how did you uh, it should have been me, yet that, you don't deserve something so great. This is not what uh, good friends and people who want to create lasting relationships do though. As uh, Socrates said in ancient Greece, envy is felt by those alone who are annoyed at the successes of their friends. For this is a pretty deep truth, and people struggled uh, with it back in the days too. But what do we want to do instead? of the feeling envy and jealousy when our friends and other people are doing well is to practice what Barbara Fredrickson, uh, who is an emotions expert, calls celebratory, celebratory love in her book Love 2.0. So it's a great book. So celebratory love means that when you see a friend or someone who is uh, doing pretty well, they seem pretty happy and like things are going well for them, you imagine that you're t uh, doing a high five with them. And it's like, the, yeah, way to go! Instead of being jealous and ask why didn't I get that or you don't deserve to have that. It's a great practice that I've gotten into my own life. Every time I meet a person who seems happy, I imagine to myself high-fiving that person. What about you? It's a good practice. And our fifth big idea, work. This is really about marketing, which is the core uh, part of this book. And uh, Ryan says that doing more great work is the best way to market yourself. And I just love this idea because I think that way too many people have the emphasis that you have to market yourself, you have to sell yourself out, you have to put out, out these ads all over the internet and try to be everywhere on the internet at the same time, just so people will see your work. But Ryan focuses more on doing the work and becoming so good at your craft that you will actually deserve having those viewers. And if you do that, if you focus on becoming a great person, doing great work, becoming better at your craft, you have a much better chance to gaining people followers and uh, subscribers and people who uh, buy your work over the long run, over decades and hundreds of years, than if you spent all of that time you could have spent getting better at your craft, marketing, and trying to uh, gain eyeballs. Which uh, reminds me of a good idea from uh, Austin Kleon's Show Your Work. Do you want, do you seek eyeballs, people just watch your content and gloss over it, or do you seek hearts, people who truly care about you and your work. That's an idea to think about. So remember, more great work is the best way to market yourself. Think about that as you celebrate other people's successes instead of being envious and jealous, being pained at their successes. Competition, there isn't a competition, only the one against your other self. 
and your teammates uh, and your competitors are your teammates in that competition against your other self. Sacrifice? How are you going to sacrifice time, easy money, comfort, and recognition to create work that lasts? And purpose. What's your one sentence? All right, this one was a fun one. Think about the one idea that jumped out at you that really resonated with you. If you can choose it right now, that means that that idea is speaking to you right now and calling you to apply it. Now, what is the one easiest thing you can do to embody the idea in your life or consistently starting today? All right, get on that. It was a quick look at Perennial Seller by Ryan Holiday. I quickly, I highly recommend the book to you if you're selling ideas, if you're an artist creating any kind of work. Thank you, Ryan Holiday, for now. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll have a splendid day, and I look forward to sharing more. See you.